Praise the Lord, everybody. God is doing something phenomenal in our day. I'm in the studio and uh, trying to get a lot of things uh, technically sorted. But So I just really came to uh, on here to everyone to say this, that this year, many people have been waiting for me to give the word of the Lord for the new year. Let me give it to you. This year, the Lord says, is going to be a time of manifestation of his promises to us individually. And it's going to be fabulous. Now, there's the corporate and there's the personal. The corporate blessing which affects everyone. And there's the, there's the um, <clears throat> personal blessing, which affects us. And um, what God's going to begin to do is he, he's going to begin to manifest things to us that he promised us. I'm sure all of us, and, and me more than anyone, has a, massive list of things that God has said to me that he wants to, me to do, he want, that he wants to do for me, that he wants to do through me, he wants to do for me, what he wants to do because of me, all of that. And um, I just want to tell you it's going to be good. A good, I have my book here, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, and you need to get a copy of this, and you can text book to 0706 if you're in Kenya, 164191 if you're internationally, you send a WhatsApp or SMS to plus 254706-164191. Again, plus 254. 706-164191, and you can get a copy of this great book, okay? Now, that's my book. Now, here's the book, the boss's book. This is the greatest book that ever was. My eyes fell upon Psalm 63. Uh, I have a big day tomorrow. I'm getting ready for it. So I'm not going to be here. very long at all, but there's a scripture in uh, Psalm 63 that talks about joy. Joy in fellowship with God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land, Oh, yeah, it's dry, all right. Where there seems to be no water. Where there's no water. This place says there's no water. Uh, I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. Well, while I live and while we're not live, while we're live and while we're, when we're not live is a long time away, but we have to do all we can right now. My soul will be satisfied. What? Marrow and fatness. That's some New King James kind of stuff there. Anyhow, and my mouth will praise you with joyful praise. And I will remember you on my bed. I'll meditate on you in the night watches. Do that every night, all night. Rolling and thinking about a lot of things. 
mostly about God and what he wants to accomplish in and through my life. You've been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I'll rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. Those that seek my life to hurt it shall go down into the lower parts of the earth. Where is that? Where is that? Those that seek my life <laughs> to destroy it in any way shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Father, I invoke this word as part. You, you, you know, New Year's Eve, the Lord had me preach a great word and the Lord spoke about judgment. And that he's going to begin to judge the wicked. This is important. And as well as there is blessing for the righteous, there is judgment for the wicked. Did you know that? There certainly is. There certainly is, my friends. Certainly is. Lord, so, we evoke this right now. Jesus, Psalm 63, verse 8. Those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. That's not the southern coast by the sea. That's the depths of hell inside the earth. You know, I saw this picture again that was really quite amazing. It has this, um, the mantle, the outside of the earth, which is 10%, the earth's crust, it's called. Then inside there are like four other different layers, but inside in the lower part, way inside, is the temperature of lava when it comes out of a volcano. And it's like uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, even more than that. Maybe it gets hotter than that. So no one could survive in that kind of heat. But the spirit of a man, when he's lost because of his wickedness and ends up there, I, I really, you know, wish that I didn't ever have any experience of evildoers that I just would think this was the strangest thing to read about someone going into the lower parts of the earth. And they shall fall by the sword, verse 10. And they will be a portion for jackals. Jackals are those wild dog kind of things that, you know, tear the flesh of people. You know, in Africa, you have the hyenas, the bad lions, oh my. But there's these wild dogs. Boy, they're, they're really bad. I mean, they, uh, they tear things apart. But, verse 11, the king, that's me, I hope that's you, shall rejoice... In God, and everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. That's the last verse of, 11 verses, the last verse of Psalm 63. Stopped? Yeah, they'll be stopped, but go back to the 8th verse. It says they'll go down to the lower parts of the earth. Oh, my. Well... They shouldn't have engaged the righteous. There's so much more. And I'm going to be getting into this. And that's a promise, not a threat. This is, the, this is the fulfillment time of manifestations of the promises. Of personal things, things that God wants to give us. You know? They have to happen now. We've crossed into the new year. In the fourth year of the second decade of the second millennium, 
And the Lord is going to do such amazing things in this season. We're going to begin to see the grace of God. I mean, in the most fantastic ways. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for that? Are you ready for this? I am. That I am. So there's the corporate blessing. There's the national blessing. There's the blessing where people, you know, um, partake of things that go like as a widespread movement. Let's say for the blessing of a nation or a society or a community of people. You know, that's great. But what about us? What about us individually? And this is, this is what the Lord is saying. Personally, I have, myself, I have so many, uh, uh, such a list of Such a list of uh, promises, you know, things I preached about by the Holy Ghost, things that are in motion, and um, they, they need to be fulfilled now. We need to have the fulfillment of those things. So I'm telling you, we are about to see the most explosive manifestations of blessings. Many people have this... Uh, Theme for the year. <clears throat> some say it's grace and favor. Some say it's uh, fulfillment of things. Some will say it's harvest. Some will say it's... I haven't heard too many because I don't watch a lot of people. You know, Some will say it's... One of my friends said it's time for, to possess the land this year. I'm like, yeah, I like that. Amen. And everybody has a, 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 a slant on it. But I, I feel zeroed in. And this has been confirmed, you know. And also, uh, a great apostle the other night on New Year's prophesied to me, and he's, he's a tremendous man of God. He, he's not the kind of guy that's looking to give someone a word. You know, like, let me just prophesy, you know, fr you know flippantly, like, by the way, you know, just I'm going to just prophesy. The way it happened was so profound, and the words that were spoken were so Fabulous. I, I'm not going to get into it. I may get into it in another set, setting. I, just, I mean, it's so grandiose on such a level, what God is, is doing with me. It would make people jealous, this I'm sure. So I really don't want to uh, tell the details of it, but it was, conf it was confirming about the great, huge impact our ministry is about to have and we've had, but there's more coming. And, and this prophecy said even greater is going to happen. Well, that's right in line now with the manifestations of promises of things that God has already set in motion that we haven't quite seen uh, in full manifestation yet. So I, I say that to you. Anyway, I say that to you who's been waiting a long time for something great to happen in your life. <laughs> Feeling like I could start to get into a lot of things that really, really flow for a long time, but, I, but I, I'm going to keep myself from doing that. But we're going to get into some more things in the, in the line of, of this particular thought from the, from the boss of <clears throat> fulfillment, manifestation. Manifestation is what? It's the physical materialization, the spiritual materialization, the uh, tangible reality coming to you of of what the Lord wants to do and, and see you having 
possessing the land. I love it. Because God, why? Because God made a covenant with every person <coughs> to, um, to bless them financially and with land and property and all kinds of things. Stuff, we call it. Oh, yes. Vehicles and equipment and buildings and lands and constructions and properties and people and the dream teams of people and all kinds of all all kinds of blessings you know all kinds of blessings god is going to begin to fulfill i'm telling you we're going to see it now 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 here's where i'm at kind of in my walk these days, I, I'll say this. God has no choice. You say, boy, that's a strong statement. Yeah, I'll say it. And I'll prove it by scripture. Isaiah 45, 11. This is, this is me and, and my boss talking together. Me and, and my, my king and my God. Beloved Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God himself. Talking. You know? The Lord is going to begin to manifest promises. Why? Because Isaiah 45, 11 said something so powerful. It said, it said, uh, concerning the works of my hands, son, this is the prophet Isaiah speaking on behalf of Jehovah. He said, you command me. Command the works of my hands. Concerning my sons, the people on the earth, what, what I'm, I'm going to do. I'll show you what I'm going to do. And concerning the works of my hands, you command me. Really? God, you can say that? Well, you know what? You get to the point where like, hey, you're like, hey, God, I'm serving you. So many things are needed to, to happen now. We're waiting, you know, and uh, the promises You've seen and heard them so clearly from you. You weren't telling stories. I said this on New Year's Eve, and you need to watch that message. Uh, last Sunday night, the Lord, the Lord said, when I said, in my, I, I said it in the morning also, in the morning service. I did two services on Sunday there. It's like, it's like, uh, when you see the promises in this word, like Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Mark eleven twenty four said, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Was he telling a story? This is written in red by Jesus. It's the words of Jesus Christ. Can he tell a lie? He doesn't lie. Do man lie? Yes. Do some people lie profusely and they, and they want to destroy you and steal from you and hurt you and con you and rip you off? Yeah, to the point of, uh, I found another verse tonight. There we go, on the judgment. I found it right in the midst of the, of the blessing psalm that talks about having fellowship with God and joy and all that. And then we see um, those that want to destroy you, they'll have their place in the lower parts of the earth. That's where they're going. <laughs> I found another one. And let's, let's add that to Isaiah 41.11. Isaiah 41.11 says, those that hate you for whatever reason, they're incensed against you, whatever, they'll, they'll, um, they're going to uh, be ashamed and disgraced, and they'll even disappear. You'll look for them, and you'll not find them. But then he said, if they continue to strive with you, the Lord said through his prophet, this is the word of God, the word of God through his prophet. Isaiah wasn't dreaming this up. It wasn't a nice thing to, uh, you know, to say. You know, this was... Uh, this was the word of God coming to us. He said, if they strive with you, they'll perish. Now, here it is. Cross-reference to Psalm 63, verse 8. Those that want to destroy you will descend into the lower parts of the earth. Boy, that's bad. But they chose that way. So, you know what? Just as a punishment alone, they deserve it. So I had to say, you know, I, had to, I have to keep saying, like I do this a lot, Lord, I forgive everybody. You have to keep doing it. Then you, you, you want to understand the mystery of forgiveness. 
because it is it is a definite it is a definite mystery. Doesn't always seem like an easy thing, and yet you have to do it. So, so I asked the Lord a further question a while ago before I switched this, these things on here, and I said, "Well, God, does this mean uh, does this mean uh, you know?" Like forgiveness means to like totally forget about it and not think about it again, not talk about it again, or what does it mean? How deep does it go? What does forgiveness mean? That I take the posture of that I, I would never want to see anyone done wrong when they've done the worst horrific things to people. You know, like you look at a murderer and they get put in jail for life or sentenced to death or whatever, they're going to go into a living hell until they're gone and then into a literal hell if they haven't gotten saved, which, you know, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> you know, and then uh, you say, I forgive you. It's almost like you feel like you're saying, now listen here, I got to get into something. The Holy Ghost is, the Holy Ghost is taking me somewhere because I'm going to say something in a minute. The pain people have had, God's going to deliver them. Many people have had a lot of pain, a lot of problem, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness, a lot of pain. It's deep, it's wide, it's thick, it's horrible. And the Lord really has to deliver us. I'm at the point in my walk now that I'm talking like this. I'm like, hey, this is not an option, okay? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound rude or demanding or you know, rambunctious or whatever you want to call it, but I, I just say, Lord, enough. This has to happen. You have to do this. It has to work out. But I'll tell you one thing I know about, about this thing we call uh, a walk with God is um, um, I, 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 I saw like a, a key of wisdom that says, you, you, needed the pro, you, you needed a problem somehow to feel the pain. And that pain could even be good because it, it pushes you to, um, to work more on your vision and your dream. If it was all so easy, you ever have things that are just so easy and then you're like, you're like asleep, you know, uh, concerning certain things. And then, then you go through something and then you're like, I, I, I've woken up, you know. I've woken up. You got to wake up to the vision. There's, there's no time to, to wait. And um, the people that have caused pain, I mean, are they going to be punished for that? Yeah. Do we need to dwell on that? No. God deliver us. There's a name in the Bible, and I say this often, Manasseh. But Manasseh, the name of the name Manasseh is the Lord make me to forget my trouble. The Lord is making me prophetically to forget my troubles. <sighs> yeah. But what happens to the, un the, 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 the un what happens to the ungodly? They appear somewhere they don't want to appear. Right here. The lower parts of the earth. Read that, Psalm 63, verse 8. You know, when you read that in the Bible and then you declare it as so, you're not saying your own opinion. You're not coming off on a thing of just like, wow, that sounds harsh and cruel. And No, it's the Word of God. This is what God thought about it. You know, I have this thought a lot. Now, the Bible does say, and of course it's clear, and of course we, we receive it as doctrine, you know. The Bible says, that the Bible says that the, dev the devil and his angels are to be the recipients of hell. The hell was made for the devil and his angels. Yep. But I had to, I've had this thought a lot this last year gone through so many things, seen so many horrible things with people going, going through. And you think some people, you just wonder if that's what God would throw them because he doesn't want to look at them for eternity. 
And then if you think, now if you really want to, you really should get scared of, of God and the fear of the, fear of the Lord sense on this point. And this is not the words of men, you know, or a thought that any man had. This is, this is from the Holy Bible. This is from the scripture. The way God shared his mind about this, and he said, uh, that there's a place of torment and weeping and gnashing of teeth to escape, you know? But you would think if God didn't want to look at people, why wouldn't he just uh, put them in a closet, a big closet somewhere and close the door and leave them there? And there's no like torment or flames or, you know, uh, burning, burning of the soul and the flesh for eternity over and over. I saw a man that had a vision. That, people need to get scared of God. I don't, know, I don't know who would come across this and you say, like, I really need to, uh, you know, ha have the fear of the Lord to, to do the right things in my life. And uh, the, thing, the thought about eternal torment. There's a man that had a vision, and I, I really believe it. You know, some it just bears. Some just can bear witness with you in the spirit. You just feel like, I just feel God on that. I feel like that was a real experience this man has had. But he said he died and he went to hell, and he saw one of the things he saw many things. I don't want to take a lot of time on this, but one of the things he saw was Hitler. He saw Hitler burning over and over again. He would like burn head to toe, like it's almost like his flesh was burning off, and he was a skeleton, and then he. Then the flesh was, came back or was there again and the flame came again over and over. And he said he saw Hitler yelling, screaming blasphemy, cursing, screaming uh, with anger, like a spirit of anger. Oh, you know the way he, the way he uh, did his speeches? <laughs> if you ever watch, it's scary. Man. What a scary man. What a psycho. Full of the devil. You know, started out with a quest for political power in Germany. And next thing you know, after he's in a while, Europe is on fire. The tanks, he built the military to go out to conquer, conquer all these nations. Why would he do that? What is the benefit of that? Even for him. It's just, it's just a diabolical, demonic, satanic, destructive, horrific thing. It's, it's nonsensical. So no wonder he'd be in hell, burning in hell. But they, the guy said he saw him just like that, the way he used to scream loud, but he was cursing, blaspheming, burning over and over again. Guess what? Hitler, however long he's been dead, they said he died in 45, but some believe that he escaped and went to South America and lived to the, into the 70s, which I, it's called Operation Grey Wolf. You can look the video up and see it tells a story about that. Anyway, I don't have time, but Operation Grey Wolf. That's what they called it. It really makes sense because you think this guy wasn't going to just kill himself like that and have his body burned and his lady there with him. He, he probably had a way of escape. It, it seems to make sense. Whatever. People could think it's a theory, whatever. I don't know, you know. But uh, when I heard it, I kind of thought, you know, that makes sense, you know. But let's say he lived another many years, and then finally he died. And most of those guys, the, the SS men, they, they died in South America. The, who was, the, who was the, the doctor, the, the doctor of death, the angel of death, they call him? Uh, what was his name? His name is slipping me. Mengele, Mengele. He went swimming and he had a stroke in the water and choked to death and drowned in the water. Supposedly that's how he perished. Other ones, they committed suicide. See, is it? And, and, or, or they were put to death, they were hung. You know, it didn't end up well for any of those people. Why? Because they were evil. Now look what the Lord said. Those 
even people, there's other scriptures that say, people that want to hunt the innocent life. Many people are innocent. This is why the Holy Ghost is speaking on this. Well, there's a mention. Now, I can't leave it here. I got to go into really good, positive things and success and power and breakthrough and abundance and all kinds of success. I'm, I'm going to get into that in, in other sessions, but somehow the Lord is opening this thing up uh, in this way. People have been done wrong. They've been done dirty. Guess what? There's consequences for the wicked. Why do you say, those who want to destroy will go to the lower parts of the earth. And then the scripture says also in Proverbs 17, 13, I said this the other night in New Year's Eve, or in the daytime also, the scripture was mentioned, that those that do evil to a good person, evil will never leave their house. So, a lot of people won't preach on this. Now, we need to understand there are consequences of being evil. And it's also a comfort to people that have been done wrong, that uh, God will vindicate you and destroy them. And this is what's going to happen now. Father, thank you for this prophetic word that this is a day of vindication. It's a day of uh, judgment on the wicked. And it's going to be the day of the flourishing of the righteous. It's going to be the day of fulfillment of promises for your own elect and your own servants, your own sons and daughters. They're going to be, begin to be blessed with the treasures and the wealth and the land and the property and the businesses and the successful ministries if you're called in that office and order in your, in your life. And, and yeah, 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 Lord. Okay, 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 okay. Yes? People that need yet to get married, you, you know, it's going to happen this year. Let me prophesy. I had a man pray, pray for, I uh, saw a man pray supposedly prophetically about some things and none of them happened uh, in that time. And I don't know why, but I think this, maybe the setting was wrong for the individual. Real man of God too, you know, I don't know why. You know, some things decreed don't happen. Some things decreed do happen. They do happen, but I want to tell you something. The promises of God are going to come to pass like fire in this day. Say a big amen. Some people that are single, you don't need to be single anymore. You've been, but you need a good person. Somebody wrote me and said their husband died years ago. Uh, so many years ago, they're up in another part of the, part of the world. Um, doing some things in and... and uh, And they said they still haven't met anybody. And then I wrote them back. I said, there's very few good people, by the way. But there has to be one <laughs> for you. <laughs> that sounds cheeky, doesn't it, to say that? There's not many good people. Oh, it's true. Yeah, but there has to be one for you. I heard Mike Murdoch say this. He says he, ne he never believed there was only one person for a person. He thinks there's several. But you know what I mean? Solomon had his, all his women. And uh, Dr. Murdoch, he said that he dated so many women and he stayed single for so many years. He said he dated, like, tried to look at about 600 different women. His words now, he's, he said this publicly, so I can say it. And finally he got married about it two years ago now. And uh, it is later in life, for sure. And uh, he thought that there was never just one person for a person. So someone thinks there's just the one. But the scripture says the rib, the sixth rib on the left side that was taken out of the Adam and became the woman and um, wombed a man, woman, but not a man, a woman. Beautiful. And that was the one that God made. So God didn't say, I'm making three for you. He made one. So the thing about more later, you know what I mean? So you can look at it both ways. But <clears throat> well, let's say there was a person. I like uh, the wisdom of, of, the, of the man of God. Because look, what if there's a, per a person and they were supposed to be the one and they didn't figure it out or it didn't work out right? So was God going to leave you alone? Say, no, there was only one. That was it. No plan B, no other chance. No, the mercy of God wouldn't leave it like that. Think about it. So both are correct, I believe they, but you know, and there's wisdom in both sides of it. 
But this, 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 this help me thing, it's a mystery. You look at so many people, you're like, you know what? This is a flaky person, man. They're nice and all that in some ways, but they're not, they're not good in, in, in enough ways to qualify for the job of being the helpmate. So it, it, it's a hard thing, and then you can't just swing at any pitch, you know? They throw the ball, they want to come, you're just like, Psh, let's play ball. Let's play the game. I had a Filipino maid one time. We, we went in, uh, in the revival we had in North Carolina, brilliant, the outpouring of the spirit, and I had them come relocate from another state. They were working for me somewhere in another state in America, and I said, come. Uh, I sent somebody to get them and get some of my things to bring down for me from uh, there. And I said, bring them with you. They'll come, they'll come and live here and be the, be the maid, be the, the housekeeper, whatever, you know. And uh, we, we went to the bowling alley one time and this was an Asian Filipino lady. And she said, I said, yeah, let's, let's go bowling, you know. So she said, yeah, let's pray boring. <laughs> Let's pray boring. That's the way she said it. <laughs> I never forgot that. Boy, she was precious. Uh, Filipinos, let me tell you, Filipinas, they call the Filipina, the, the female, they're the hardest working, most diligent people. They're so, they, they can. I had one one time, I was renovating, uh, moving stuff in the, one of my houses, and, and man, I went downstairs to take an international call. And at that time, you know, we didn't have cell phones. This was a long time back. And uh, I went downstairs and took the call from the, the house phone from the, from the ground floor. We were, there was, the other place was upstairs. And I was gone about 20 minutes on the phone. And I went back up and the place was totally rearranged. I was like, how did you do that? I almost fainted when I looked in the room. I saw everything was like a mess. Boxes everywhere. And so she took all that stuff and rearranged it. Boy, that's a gift. That's a gift we need in, 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 the, in the ministry right now. People to arrange things. That's part of the dream team, the order. This is a fulfillment of the promise. I mean, the things we desire and want. Mark 11, 24, the things you're desiring. Pray, believing you receive them and you'll have them. John 15, 7 said, Here's a manifestation fulfillment promise, personally. As you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask for what you will, for what you want, and it will be given to you. That's powerful. Now, I have some other scriptures I'm going to bring you in, in another session on this topic. But this is going to be the day, thus saith the Lord, you know, you know me as God's prophet, and I'm going to say this to you. Fulfillment and manifestation of promises. Promises made, promises in the works. God, God's always working behind the scenes. But you haven't seen the fulfillment tangibly enough of these promises yet. But I want to tell you prophetically they're coming in this season right now. Lift your hands and say a big amen. Father, thank you for this. In Jesus' name. And God's going to remove pain. Koran Shala. Varande la sala, shalaba keto, loneliness, hurt, rejection, you know, problems that have plagued you or remained with you. They have to, they have to, they have to be shown the exit. Prophecy, the goodbye moment to the wrong things is here, and that's the saith the Lord. You know the thing when you do this, like uh, the end of the year, like the very last thing, we, we wrote things down. Now, some people didn't do this, or you weren't with an astute enough pastor that he would have you do it. And I'm not going to do it now, but I want, to, I want to prepare you in advance. Start to look at this. Make a list of 23. Now, 23 is gone. But even a few days later, okay? We're going to the next weekend. It's okay. I've been busy. You know, I might have wanted to do this uh, 
from the other day, but I've, I've had a very busy weekend, and here we are. I, I really am not that concerned about which day it is, just that I'm going to get it done. Because it's, it's, in, it's in my spirit, it's in the file, it's in the Rolodex, it's in the hard drive. It's from heaven to me, through me, out to the world. You see all the nations behind me and the lines and things flying from... Can't get it. Middle of America over to the other parts of the... All across the world. The Lord is... Um, Going to do the most astounding things for us. Woo! Getting happy on this thought. Things not done yet. Things still broken, missing in your life. God's going to fill them in now. Going to fill those things in now. You're going to begin to see the favor of God. And... Great things are going to begin to come forth. It's going to be great. Now, especially in the in the in the realm of also of of um, your personal life, you know, your health, your your wealth, your finances, your structures of things, you know, things going well, things going according to a, a great plan and operation of, of brilliance, you know. It's going to happen. It is going to happen, I'm telling you right now. The, the breaking of pain, God's going to pour the balm of Gilead. It's a personal thing. To wash away kurandalasa. You know the anointing is, is here, the anointing. You know. You know. You know, you know. You can feel it. You can hear it. You can sense it in the voice. You can feel it coming through by the mind of the Spirit of God and from through me. Intangible expression of reality and realness. That there's, there's going to be a, a, a breakthrough. I mean, just a breakthrough beyond anything we've seen. And you know what? God has no choice but to do it for us. You may say, that's a very strong statement to make, and it sounds even too forward of a thing to say, you know? But I'll tell you this. You get to the point in your life and you say, God, enough, enough of waiting. I'm not going to wait. I'm awake. I'm alive. We have, we have so much time, you know, to get everything done. We don't have all day. And God's going to wash away problems. Oh, yes. So as the year ended, you might not have written down the things you want to leave behind and then write a list of the things you want to have more appropriate now. But write down, make a list of things that you want to see gone and make a list of things you want to see received now, that you want to receive now in your life. And you tell and tell the Lord, I, I'll tell the Lord, we'll tell the Lord together. God, my Father, you have to do this for me. It must happen. Nothing can be missing. What I need and want, I must have. Are you hearing are you hearing God here? Fulfillment of promises made. Fulfillment of promises from his word. Fulfillment of brilliant principles that I wrote in my book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You know? And the Lord spoke this word to me. I, 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 there's some clips going around the internet that my clips on... Uh, you know, those short clips that go on the <clears throat> Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and all of them. And, and, and the Lord was saying, everything's going to change for the better now. Though sometimes it doesn't always seem to be the case quite yet, 
but it really is in motion. I tell you prophetically, the manifestations and fulfillment of promises to you. Now the big picture of world evangelism, yes, it's on. And big revivals, yes, it's on. Transformation of nations, you know. I'm sure I'll get into that at some point, but I I, I go by what the Lord I go by what the Lord is 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 telling me, you know. I don't I don't try to drum something up just because it's, uh, you know, like talking about a nation that's having problems. And all that. I'm well aware. But the Lord said this the other night. And I was in a private meeting with a bunch of leaders on Thursday night. Today's what? What is it? Saturday night. Saturday night now. And the Lord said that um, the big picture things that are going to happen for the country, you know, will get worked out. Even they could happen through you when, you know, more so when you're, when you're getting blessed in your life. You know, a lot of people aren't whole. They're not, they're, they're in a mess. They have an endless, uh, endless problems. Endless, seemingly endless, but those things need to come to an end. So how are you really going to fulfill the big picture that God has to all these countries you see behind me? And, you know, what is going to affect them through you? You getting the victory first. And this is the word of the Lord for right now. Now, let's get a lot of things fixed and see a lot of things done. Then God could begin to speak about other things because he does ultimately want to revolutionize the world. He wants, to make, he wants us to make disciples of all nations. But how can you go unless you're sent? How can you go unless you're provided for? How can you move forward unless you have the strategy, the plan, and also the resources and the wherewithal to do everything? Are you seeing what I'm saying? So thus saith the Lord, Borin Chile Sokoroma Shakalabhaya, Pishala Mahanda. Oh yes. It's it's gonna be a time of manifestation and fulfillment now of promises of blessing to us. Lord, we receive. Fix everything in our life. The scripture says, I have begun a good work in you and I will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, of his appearing and returning again to catch us away in the rapture first and then another return. The second coming is not the rapture. The rapture happens before that. The second coming is when he comes back. The scripture says he's going to come back with his saints to retake the earth and institute the millennial reign. But guess what? Let's look at the sequence of scripture. That can't happen until Armageddon, Great Tribulation, the man of sin, son of perdition, all that nonsense, mark of the beast, all that's fulfilled, and the, the, the destruction of the earth, the, the Armageddon, the 200 million, uh, Revelation says 200 million Horses or an army people will come against, try to come against little Israel. It's sick. It's insane. But guess what? I'm not going to be here for that. Not that I will have passed before. I, I don't think so. Uh, we may see the rapture. The way things are going, it's like we're really in the last days and we're closer. We're definitely closer than we ever were. And I'll say that just by calendar reality. Well, yeah, we're closer than we were because before was before, and now we're closer, you know, it's kind of a, duh, <laughs> that's kind of obvious, an obvious equation to figure out. I don't mean it like that. I mean, look, look at the signs of the time. Look, look at what's going on. So we may just see the rapture in our, in our day, you know. And there will be seven years while the earth is being destroyed. And then the second coming of Christ comes. But we're going to be out of here first. So when it gets really bad, things are going crazy in the world, as we're seeing. <coughs> but, um, but we're going to be out of here first.
before that end comes to everything, we'll be, kept, we'll be caught up in the air to meet him, which we affectionately call the rapture. You find it in 1 Thessalonians 4, you can read it there. And uh, great tribulation is not going to be great tribulation for me. I'm going to be with the Lord. While all this is going on on the earth, and it's going to get so bad that men will even pray to die, but they can't die, that's not for me. Tribulation is destruction of the wicked, not the righteous. And I'm righteous. You know, there's people in the church that say, are you just a sinner saved by grace? Are you calling a saved man a sinner? No. Well, people think because they're so close to the sin nature all the time, because they're living in the flesh and they're living, that they think, uh, you know, they think, uh, you know, you can just call yourself a sinner because you're still in the flesh, you're still in the, in the, in, in the physical man. And all, you know. No, the Bible says, we're the righteousness of God in Christ. The righteousness of God in Christ. So if I'm of God and in Christ and I'm righteous, that's what the Bible says about me. So am I a sinner? No. And the scripture says, should sin have dominion over you? God forbid. No. Let not it have dominion over you, but the scripture then says, it cannot. So he that, is, he that has begun a good work in us will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And the scripture also says he's the perfecter of things that concern us. He's the ruler of the nations, but he's the ruler of Thomas. Oh, my Lord. He's the ruler of the nations, but he's the ruler of Thomas. He's the ruler of you. He's the ruler of the righteous. And we're righteous, so we deserve to be blessed. Don't say, oh, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve that. Well, God says you deserve it, and you're supposed to have it, but you don't have it yet. So guess what? That's why the God has the prophet to be raised up and stirred up to speak for him saying this, that this is going to be the day of the manifestation and fulfillment of promises. Wow. 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 I love that. Thank you, Lord. This is volume one on this, on a new... Uh, series of messages as I'll get to do. I'll continue in this one. <sighs> Manifestation of the promises. Personally to me, personally to you. <laughs> and Proverbs 10.22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. And Deuteronomy 8.18 says, I'm the Lord your God. It teaches you to, to oh, that's Isaiah 48.17. Excuse me, I, 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 I intertwine those because they're both so good. Isaiah 48.17, I'm the Lord thy God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. And um, Deuteronomy 8.18, which I was trying to say, I give you power to get wealth. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, I give you treasures of all kinds of places. Where are they? They're coming. I did a whole series, 65 video messages. 65, 65, day after day after day, within a course of like two, and two months. Two months is 60 days straight, so it's about two and a half months, because I know there was a day in between here and there where I was busy and scheduled and I didn't do the broadcast. But so let's say two, over a course of two and a half months. The money is coming. This is a prophetic series. The money is coming. I thought about that again today. I said, Lord, you said all that. You weren't telling stories. When Jesus made the promise, be healed and you'll be healed. I want to heal you. I want to bless you. 
It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God, he wasn't telling stories. When he told the parables and he, told, and he gave the promises and all the promises are that are there even for financial riches and resources for us. God, God was, he wasn't telling stories. I mean, like uh, funny stories like uh, lullabies or, you know, fables. He was telling us the truth. Saying what he wants to give us. And this is, this is the reality now. This is the reality now. Manifestation and fulfillment. What are you believing for? What were you supposed to have already that by warfare was diverted from you? And you still didn't, you still didn't see it happen yet. What is that? That's what the Lord's putting his hand on, his finger on, say, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to make sure you have it. And our prayer is to be, Lord, I'm wrestling with this thing. I'm not letting it go. I'm commanding it to be so. The angels of the Lord have to come and grant me my very heart's desires. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Guard your heart for out of your flow the issues of life. Here's another, uh, here's an admonition, another Interesting uh, thing to say. Prophetically here, guard your life. Don't let wrong people in. Now, sometimes you, you didn't have enough discernment to see a particular situation or somebody tricked you. Then it's horrible. What are you going to do? Forgive them, move on, and let God put them into the lower part of the earth. Let them be ashamed and disgraced and put away that no one can find them. And if they want to keep fighting with you, they'll die. Leave it like that and forget about it. I know you have the thoughts of you want revenge and don't concern yourself with revenge. Concern yourself with getting blessed. Because guess what? The more blessed you are, you can be, then begin to forget your trouble. <coughs> and, I, <coughs> and I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost, this is a prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, God's wiping away the pain, the tears, the problem, the stress, the frustration. It's leaving you. And the fulfillment of the promises of God are coming forth for you now. And that's thus saith the Lord. I'm Thomas Manton the fourth. God bless you very much. My dear friend and partner of the ministry. Become a partner of the ministry. You want to get a copy of this book, just write book. The word B-O-O-K to plus two five four seven zero six one six four one nine one. You can use that for Mpesa to sow seed. You can use paypal.me, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. That's an easy link. Paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. And you could sew by PayPal around the world. Use the M-Pesa system. You can send to 706 164191 and I would just love to have you reading this great book. And of course, the bestseller of all time, as I said on Sunday, I'll repeat it again. This is the greatest book of all. Billions of copies in print, the bestseller <clears throat> in human history. The best-selling book in human history. The most important book in human history. And then, of course, God has his servants write another book, like he had his prophets write. <laughs> Principles here as servants. The writing thing has not stopped. <laughs> and by the way, I have, I have five other books we're working on reprinting. And uh, they're going to come into reprint. And then there's other new ones we're doing. Oh, I'll get into that another day. But the Lord is so good. Get a copy of this book. Become a partner. Sow into this grace. Sow into this word. Sow into this great word right here. 
where the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you the fulfillment and manifestation of the promises I've made to you. That is the word for the new year. If you were wondering, I've told you. This is it. The manifestation of God's promises to us. Is he, is he working on the nation? Yes. Is he working on economies? Yes. Is he working on societies? Oh, yes. But is he working on things for us? A trillion times, yes. And that is the word of the Lord. Get ready for the manifestation of the promises that you've been waiting to see fulfilled. The Lord is going to begin to give you great blessings. The information will be on the screen and also in the heading of the titles of the messages on how you can sow the description also in the, the message uh, on, on the channels. And you'll see how you can become a partner of this ministry and sow into this grace. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, uh, belatedly, if I didn't tell you before. Happy New Year. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, also his power and his prosperity and the fulfillment and manifestations of promises to you in Jesus' name. We'll see you back again online tomorrow. We have great meetings coming up. Share this with everybody. The Lord bless you. Keep you, make his face to shine upon you. Give you great rest tonight. And, and, and you're going to begin to see manifestations of things you've been waiting for. And that's the prophetic word. Testify. And, um, and uh, I, I want to I hear about what's happening in your life. Hey, look here. It's 1212. Isn't that the apostolic number? I got to go. Okay, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. After 12, there's 1213, which is a famous scripture that I so love. Is, uh, he, he uses his prophets to bring people out of the wilderness, and then they're blessed through him, and then they're preserved through him. So, um, Hmm, 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 hmm. I want to read you a testimony. Dr. Prophet uh, TM4, your prayers are so power are very powerful, so powerful. After you prayed, Yol S, I'll say his name for short, but he's, he has a Jewish last name, you know, a Jewish man, who's here. He said his relative who had been hijacked in Israel, you know, by the Hamas, has just been released. And he said, this, this uh, great woman, she, she works for the UN, she said, he is so grateful to you. Well, I'd like to meet this man now. Thanks and be abundantly blessed. And that's initials DK from Nairobi, Kenya. Testimony just came in this evening. We posted it on the Facebook page with a pic beloved, beautiful picture I found of Israel. I just shouted out, Israel photo, give me. And I popped up and I found one with the flag and the Temple Mount in the back. And I cropped it out and filtered it, put a nice light on it, the lighting in it. And boom. And the testimony. Isn't that great? The relative of this man. I was, I was asked to pray and I prayed and they have been released. They're alive and well in Israel. And this man, the relative over here is so happy. I look forward to meeting him, shaking his hand and we can cry together, have a tear in our eye about how beautiful this miracle is. Uh, my editors in the studio, my editor in the studio has, has I've asked them to find some testimonies that we had recorded, and uh, I'm going to be releasing some of them uh, soon. And there's many more. I want to hear your testimony. Write me a testimony. Write me a praise report. Uh, do that. And become a partner of the ministry. I can't stress the value of that for you enough. God blesses my partners. Oh, yes, he does. So we're in it to win it. When you join with me and partake of this grace, 
and covenant together with this anointing and this ministry. You see all the nations behind me. All of these we're touching, we're touching everywhere around the world. And so much more is going to begin to happen. The Lord will bless you tangibly and supernaturally. And based on this prophetic word that he's speaking here, it's the time of manifestation and fulfillment of promises that you will be mightily blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! So I'll talk, to you, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. Tune in. Share this with everyone. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, and I like to say his power and his prosperity, but I want to add one now prophetically, his promises to you that they will be fulfilled in manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. Good day, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Gioni Jema, Siku Jema, Gioni Jema, Lala Salama. Wherever you are, whatever time of day you're watching this, the Lord bless you. I love you and I'm praying for you. Thank you for being my partner. I want to hear your testimony and I, I'll, I'll be looking to receive your seed via M-Pesa, PayPal, the website, however. And if you could find me, like if you, you know, somebody wrote me and they said they wanted to send a bank wire and they, they had a glitch on their system getting through and they just sent it through the M-Pesa system and it was sizable. And, uh, you know, the Lord just touched them to do that. So on behalf of some real estate uh, uh, deals they're doing that they're having some issues with, in your business life, something that has not manifested yet, sow a seed into this anointing, into this prophetic word to say, God, I will see the manifestation of the blessing in this. And I'm claiming it. I'm going to have it all in Jesus' name. Seed will produce harvest in that regard for you. Tithes will produce the opening of the windows of heaven in those regards for you. Take advantage of it. Take action. And the Lord bless you. Looking forward to hearing from you. And we'll see you all again tomorrow. Be blessed. Mightily in Jesus' name. Adios. Love you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119.105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10.41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed. <laughs>